Good evening and welcome to tonight's service. I am Sadie Mink, the ZP Class of 2020 President. Thank you for joining. If you could please join me in prayer. Dear Lord, today is as any other. The sun rises, the wind blows, the rain falls. People are born, they laugh, they cry, they dance, they die. Today, time, today time is as it has been since you gave it in the beginning. It will be until you bring things to an end. But today is also a fresh and new start. It's the start of a new beginning for each one of the graduates. As we look towards the future, we are filled with hope, for we know the plans that you have for us. Plans to prosper and not for harm. You let, let your word be a lamp to our feet and a guide to our paths. Let us live our lives for you and let everything we say and do bring glory to your name. We also pray for tomorrow. This graduation opens another door to another time. Lead us now into the future. Give us a focus and clarity and help us to understand our purpose and give us courage to respond and step towards that purpose. Open our hearts now, Lord, to receive this message and let your fruit grow of it. In your name we pray, amen.
And having given them bright standing, he gave them his glory. What shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in him. 
We'd like to welcome Pastor Kent this evening and thank him for sharing his word. circumstances and setting here uh, in the uh, gymnasium this evening, but I want to say what a privilege it is to be with you tonight. I want to thank Sadie for her opening prayer, and Ashley and Hannah for assisting in our scripture reading, and also so thankful for the ladies bringing us special music. We'll take a moment to say congratulations to the 2020 graduating class here at Commodore Perry on your accomplishments and on tomorrow's graduation. I can only imagine that the second half of your senior year leading up to graduation is nothing like that you dreamed or imagined. No one could have anticipated where we would be today. So tonight, over the next just few minutes, I want to encourage you with a message called The Choices You Make. And I want to encourage you with this thought. For everything that you face in your life, you will have a choice. You'll have a choice to make, and the choice is this. How will you respond? In the world, there will always be challenges. There will be many disappointments, but in the times of disappointment and challenges we face, it's in those moments that you and I are stretched. It's in those moments that our character is developed, and it's during these times of struggle that each and every one of us grow the most. Jesus said this in John 16, 33. He said, in this world, there will be many trials and tribulations. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome. When I was asked to uh, give this message tonight, and I received a letter from Sadie, and uh, began to think about it, began to think, what could I bring to the 2020 graduating class of Commodore Perry? And as I was preparing, uh, last week I ran across a devotion that really touched my heart, and I thought it just fit perfectly with where we are in this season, and an encouragement and a challenge for you as this year's graduating class. And the title of that devotion was called, You're Called or Created to Be an Overcomer. Nothing becomes great until it overcomes something. The Apostle Paul said this, For a great door has been opened before me, yet there are many adversaries. Great doors of opportunity come with great challenges. And those challenges will be what stretches our faith. If outstanding success came easy, we know that everybody would have it. But if everybody had it, then it really wouldn't be outstanding success, then would it? Think about the caterpillar for just a moment. How does the caterpillar develop into the beautiful butterfly? By overcoming the cocoon. Would it be easier to stay in the comfort of the cocoon? Some days the struggle is so great that the caterpillar probably thinks so. But the price of freedom? The price of flight and discovery is found in those moments of struggle, development, and breakthrough. There is no other way. Why do you think it is that Jesus would send his disciples onto the storm, in a storm onto the Sea of Galilee? Jesus was teaching them that they were to trust him in every situation in their life, the good times and the bad. Soon he knew he'd be leaving them, so he used a different experience to equip them for the future. The question is, what are we trying to overcome today? What is the choice we would be making in these circumstances? My encouragement would be, instead of complaining and asking God why, or maybe even asking God to remove it or take it away, to try to see this as preparation for the things that he's called for you, class of 2020. We heard a scripture reading just moments ago from Paul's writings in Romans chapter 8. And specifically, I want to look at verse 28 because he said, And God causes all things to work together for good to those who love him and those that are called according to his purpose. And it was finished with this in verse 31. For if God is for us, then who can be against us? As I was thinking a moment about people who've developed and done great things throughout scripture, 
couldn't help but think about a young man named Joseph who at the age of 17, God gave him a dream and a vision. But David did, or excuse me, Joseph had no idea what that would mean and the journey in life he would have to take. Joseph was sold as a slave by his brothers. He was falsely accused and imprisoned for 13 years before he would step into the position of highest ranking official in all of Egypt. God's plan and purpose for his life. I thought about Esther, Queen Esther, and what it meant for her to go before the throne for the king and represent them on behalf of her people, the risk that she was taking. But God was working all things together for good. I think about Daniel spending that night in the lion's den. I think about David as a teenage boy facing off with a giant on the battlefield and how God used that opportunity to anoint him as the next king of Israel. I thought about a little woman in a town called Zarephath who was a widow at the time of famine, was simply going to make her last loaf of bread, eat it with her son, and die. But in that moment, God sent Elijah to her. It is God who causes all things to work together for his good. For every one of these men and women, what was significant is it came down to them what? The choices they would make. Would they choose to trust God even in the midst of their most dire circumstance? Or would they be afraid? Would they turn against God? Would they blame God? Would they be mad at God? You know, as I thought about scriptures, I ran across a story one day, and there was a gentleman named Brad who worked for a telecommunications company. And they built towers, telecommunication towers. And he tells the story about a man named John. You know, when I think about this, everything that we face in life is truly about our perspective. It's about our attitude. It's about the choice we're going to make. Let's talk just for a moment about John. John was the kind of guy that a lot of people loved to hate. You see, he was always happy. He was always in a good mood and seemed to find something positive in everything that happened in life. And when someone would ask him how he was doing, he would simply reply, if I were any better, I'd be a twin. John was a natural motivator. If an employee was having a bad day, John was there telling them to look at the positive side of the situation. Everything would be all right. I observed John said Brad, and seeing his natural positive personality made me curious. So one day I asked him, John, I don't get it. You can't be per uh, positive all the time. How do you do that? And he replied, each morning I wake up and I say to myself, I've got two choices today. I can choose to be positive or I can choose to be negative. I choose to look at things through a positive perspective. When you think about it, each time something bad happens, I can choose to be the victim, or I can choose to learn something from it that I can apply in my life. Every time something comes to me, someone comes to me complaining, I can choose to accept their complaining, or I can point out the positive side and help them see the good things in life. Yeah, but that's not easy, I protested. Well, it can be, John said. Life truly is about the choices we make. When you eliminate all the other influence, Every situation that we face in life is a choice. You are the one who has the ability to choose how you will react. You choose how people will affect your attitude and your perspective. So you see, brethren, the bottom line is the choice is yours and how you will live. So I reflected on what he said, and soon after we had the little talk, I left the tower industry to start my own business. We lost touch, and often I thought about him, and when I made a choice about life instead of reacting to it, several years later, I heard that he was involved in a serious accident falling some 60 feet from a communications tower. After 18 hours of surgery, weeks of intensive care, he was released from the hospital. John had rods in his back and had barely survived. I asked him when I saw him six months after the accident, how you doing, John? He said, if I were any better, I'd be a twin. Want to see my scars? I declined to see his wounds, but I did ask him what, he had gone, what had gone through his mind when the accident took place. He said the first thing that went through my mind was the well-being of my soon-to-be born dog. And then as I lay on the ground, I remembered again that I had two choices. See, I could choose to live or I could choose to die. 
that day I would choose to live. But weren't you scared? Were, were you unconscious? Well, he continued. He said, well, I lay there on the ground. The paramedics came, and they were great. In fact, they kept telling me I was going to be fine. But when they rolled me into the ER, and I saw the expressions on the faces of the doctors and nurses, that is when, for the first time, I really got scared. In their eyes, I could read, we're looking at a dead man. He'll never make it. And at that moment, I knew I had a choice. I knew I had to take action. What did you do? Asked Brown. Well, there was this big burly nurse shouting questions at me, said John. She asked me if I was allergic to anything. Yes, I replied. And suddenly, all the doctors and the nurses stopped working as they waited for my answer. I took a deep breath, and I yelled, Brown. Over their laughter, I told them, I'm choosing to live, so operate on me as if I'm alive, not dead. He lived thanks to all the skills of his doctors, but also because of his perspective and his amazing attitude. And I learned from him that every day we have a choice. We have a choice to live and how we will live our lives. You know, I was thinking about this story as it pertains to the graduating class of 2020. There's never probably been a circumstance quite like this, not in my lifetime. And we would have a choice today as a graduating class. We can be disappointed. We can wonder why. We can be angry, frustrated. We might even be fearful a little bit about what's happening in the fall. Will the college have class? Will I be on campus? Will I not? What are the choices that I need to make today? The choice that I would encourage you with this is know this. God is in control of all things. He holds the world upon his hand. And he causes all things to work together for his good, according to his purpose. That God has plans and purposes for your life, if you will trust him, if you will choose to walk with him. Life truly is about the choices we make. Many people allow the circumstances that they face every day to dictate to them how their life will take place. My encouragement to you is those who do great things are the ones who choose to fall after the heart of God and to trust Him. Great accomplishments for any of us are often discovered in the times of our greatest difficulty when we learn to trust Him. The second scripture, and I'm going to close with this and close with a word of prayer for you. But in my encouragement to you, the second scripture we chose was from Ephesians chapter 2. And I'm just going to focus on one scripture there, and it was the Verse 10, the end of the scripture that says this, the Apostle Paul said this about you. I want you to think about this person, class of 2020. You are his workmanship. You have been created in Christ Jesus for good things. One translation of that would say you are his masterpiece. There's not another graduating class like yours. And you've been created for good things. Those things which God prepared in advance for you to do. So I want to encourage you as you prepare to graduate tomorrow with your families a little differently than normal. You have a choice. You can be disappointed or you can celebrate the uniqueness of this time that you're in. You can celebrate the potential that lies ahead in your life. The choice is up to you. Would you join me in prayer? Father, we are so thankful for the opportunity we have to bring a word of encouragement to this graduating class, the 2020 class of Commodore Perry. Thankful for this privilege to share the word of God. Thank you to share a word of encouragement. And Father, we can celebrate today that regardless of the circumstances we face in this life, Father, that we know that you have plans, good plans for each and every one of us. That does not mean that the process of fulfilling those plans will not be faced with adversity and difficulty. We know they will. But it's in those moments, Father, that we have the choice to trust in you. We can choose to live life and live it to the fullest, the fullest potential of what you've created for us. And Lord, I thank you that you are the giver of life in all things. And I, I just bless this graduating class, and I pray these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.
in each of us for our past 18 years. I pray that each of us will take something from the message tonight to heart and use it throughout the next steps in our lives. We ask for your guidance in the next steps of our individual journeys. Please keep us safe as we go our separate ways tonight, Lord, and as we go out into the world to start the rest of our lives. We ask for your blessing on this district, the teachers, the administration, and the students. We thank you for everything you've done for us thus far. I pray that you continue to bless us in whatever life brings. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you for joining us tonight, and enjoy the rest of your evening.